Hi boys and girls, and welcome to the November 30th edition of A Full Steam Ahead. Today is all about cardboard boxes. That's why I've been mentioning it to you week after week, to save some, gather some from around the house. It's still not too late, maybe you'll be inspired by something you see today, and you'll find the box to go with it. So, before we start with the actual making, I'd like to read just a couple silly stories. They're the things that got me interested in doing a box story time. So let's start with not a box. It's written by Antoinette Portis and is published by HarperCollins. Why are you sitting in a box? It's not a box. <gasps> What's he imagining it is? A race car, cool. What are you doing on top of that box? Rabbit Peak, he thinks it's a mountain. Why are you squirting a box? What do you think that's going to be? I have an idea. A community helper that helps us when we're in danger. <gasps> I said it's not a box. Ah, it's a fireman putting out a fire. Now you're wearing a box. This is not a box. <laughs> He's a robot. Are you still standing around in that box? It's not, 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 not a box. A pirate ship, a hot air balloon, riding on the back of an elephant or a tugboat. Well, what is it then? Hmm. It's my not a box. Ha <laughs> ha, rocket ship. Off to the moon. So he just used his imagination. He had a plain box, and it became all of these things when he imagined it. Now, our next story, it's a little bit longer. It's called The Nowhere Box by Sam Zupardi and published by Candlewick Press. George's little brother was being a real nuisance. So was his even littler brother. Wow, I really enjoy the pictures of this book. Uh, George is not happy. He's got a big frown on his face. He's trying to play with his toys, but he has a toddler brother and a baby brother that are just destroying everything. Everywhere George went, the littler boys followed. George had had enough in the bathroom and they even followed him there for crying out loud. Where are you going? Nowhere and you can't follow me. Oh, if we look in the background, mom and dad just got a new dryer and I see a giant box was delivered. The box from the washing machine was just what George needed. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. He's using his imagination, but he's also using a uh, crayon and scissors and all kinds of stuff. Let's see what he's doing. Making little circles. Making a circle. Oh, he's got a hatch in the top. Looks like he's putting some sort of antenna on top. What's it gonna be? In no time, he was ready for his escape. George pressed a button. Let's see, he's got exclamation point, directions. This one has a swirly swirl, and that looks like that's the one he's pushing. What's gonna happen? He was nowhere. Nowhere was vast and empty. But not for long. Oh, there goes that imagination again. He's shaking out the box and all kinds of things from his imagination are coming out. Soon nowhere was amazing! <whistles> Roller coaster. Nowhere was magnificent! 
Nowhere was stupendous. Now he's a pirate. Meanwhile, George's little brothers were wondering where he'd gone. He wasn't in the bedroom. He wasn't in the bathroom. He wasn't in the living room. Where was George? He was nowhere. It's kind of like a magic box. But in nowhere, there were no enemy pirates to fight. And there were no dragons to be found. In fact, there was no one there at all. And that's when George realized, hmm, he knew just where to find great enemy pirates and pretty good dragons too. With that thought, he hopped back in his ship and set a course for home. Now he's taking his flashlight, shining it, and hitting the home button. George, where have you been? Um, uh, nowhere. Now he's playing with his brothers. Well, <laughs> and then the baby gets distracted and watches the box. But see, he'd just been hiding in the box the whole time using his imagination, and he came out to play with his brothers. So a box can be a getaway. You could hide in a box. Our last story is called What to Do with a Box. It's written by Jane Yolen, illustrated by Chris Sheban, and published by Creative Editions. I like the pictures in this book. I hope they show up on the camera. The dog sniffing the box. A box. A box is a strange device. You can open it once. You can open it twice. <laughs> I can't tell. I think she lifted the flap and it opened right into somebody's face. I'm not 100% sure, but that's what it looks like to me. And she squished the dog. You can climb inside and there read a book. It can be a library, a palace, You can lock the door with a magic key. Invite your dolls to come in for tea. Ooh, very crowded. You can paint a landscape with sun, sand, and sky. Uh oh, <laughs> I see. If you look, like the words, everything's going very smoothly and very nice. But if you look at the pictures, they tell a slightly different story. He's resting, he's pretending he's at the beach, he's painted a beach scene, he's resting his head in the beach ball. Everything's hunky-dory fine. But I see the sister right over the box pouring something on his head. You could cry on an egret that's flying by. Or paint a blue river and very green trees. You can borrow a fan just to make a small breeze. So she's drawn a different scene instead. Instead of the beach, she's more in the woods with a river going by and a breeze with a fan. And she crayoned a river on the floor. You can drive in that box all around a dirt track. You can sail in that box off to Paris and back. A box, a box is a wonder indeed. The only such magic that you'll ever need. So come for a visit right now, right this day. I've got a grand box, just so we two can play. This end up, they crossed out some of the letters, now it says the end. So those were the stories that got me thinking about what a box could be besides a box to carry things in, which is the original use for a box. The cardboard box was invented in 1816 in England, and it was a really good idea because before then they had to use big wooden crates to lug everything around. Or if you uh, went to the grocery store, the market, 
Uh, you might have to use a cloth bag or a net bag or just carry things. So things were shipped and brought places in giant boxes made of wood. Once they invented cardboard, it was much lighter and easier to transport. You could break it down so you didn't have to store giant wooden boxes someplace. You could break and fold it down, and when you needed it again, you could open it up. So, today, if you look around, you will see boxes everywhere. All you have to do is look in your cupboards. You will see lots of boxes. So before I show you some ideas on what to do with those boxes, there's a few techniques that you can use that will help you while you're making something out of a box. Let's see. One of the ones I learned from Miss Megan, who works at the library, is what to do when a box has writing all over it. Maybe uh, you want this to be a pair of binoculars. Well, it's not really going to look as much like a pair of binoculars if it says Triscuit on it, right? So, what you can do to make it plain on the outside well, you could uh, tape or glue some paper over it, right? But you couldn't really color on it. That wouldn't help. There's just too much ink on the outside. So we need a plain box. To get a plain box, all we need to do is start to take the box apart. Now you want to do it carefully because you don't want big rips. So. It would probably have been helpful if I had pre-done this, but I want you to see how hard it can be sometimes so you don't get discouraged when you try to do it, right? So I'm just sticking my fingers in here and pulling apart as if I'm opening the box from the wrong end. There, okay? So now it's open at both ends. That's step number one. Now step number two, sometimes, a box is glued together like this one, and you can just peel it apart where it's glued. If it wasn't glued together right here on the edge, you could also cut it right up the middle. I should be more careful with scissors. You could also cut it right up the middle and flip it in half. But we don't have to do that with this box because it's already been formed with a seam. We just undo it right on that same seam. And this is what we're left with. Now this is how in the factory, it's just going to come out like this in sheets, right? It doesn't come out of a machine already made into a box. It comes out like this. So instead of folding it back so that all the words are on the outside, we just turn it inside out. Everywhere that it bends one way, just bend it the other way. So we go back to that seam. And we need to put this together. Now, when you're working with cardboard, you can use paste, scotch tape, stapler, or duct tape, or masking tape. I think for this I'm going to staple it. If I use glue or paste, I might have to wait a little bit for it to dry, and I'm kind of in a hurry because I'm working with you. You don't mess around waiting an hour for my box to dry. Of course I made it sound easy and then I try to do it, it sounds hard. flat on a tabletop instead of trying to staple in the air, that would help. Yes, much better. All right. Now, you just fold in the parts that were folded in before. You can tape them. You can staple them. You might want to cut them off if you're making something that needs uh, like if I was making the binoculars, I would just cut off the ends or cut a hole in the ends. But I'm just going to tape it shut. Uh, now I've made a block. You can color on this easier, right? It's going to show up. You could put stickers on it. 
anything. You could print off a coloring page and put it on it, whatever you want to do. That's how you turn a box inside out and make it plain. All right, so you've made your plain boxes. What if you need um, two things to flap, to be hinged together? Let's see, I've got two pieces of cardboard here. Let's say I want them together. One way I could do it is to make a hinge, like, um, like a door has a hinge. It opens and closes, but it's still going to be attached in one place. One reason I like duct tape, it's really strong and you don't even need scissors. <laughs> you can just rip it. So you put the two pieces that you want to be together, just flat together, and you put a piece of duct tape over it. Now if you want to, you can just do that in one place, or if you want to make sure it's extra strong, you can duct tape it on both sides. And if you have pretty duct tape, it also helps you decorate it. So that's how you make a hinge, or if you were just trying to make a box, you could take another piece and duct tape it there, and another piece and duct tape it there, and you would have a, a box out of pieces of cardboard. Okay, another way to attach things. Let's say I want something to move. They call it articulated if it can move. So if you are making um, uh, 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 ah, one of those things that comes down when you're parking. <laughs> Some sort of barrier to let somebody through and not let them through. Ah, I can't get in. Let them through. Ah. All you need to do is make a little hole in the two places you want to join together. Then you take some of these. I'm going to be putting these in your bag this week because they're very, very handy for working with cardboard. These are called Brad Fasteners. And I just put them through one, put them through two, and then fold them down. You've probably used these before in arts and crafts projects. Now, if I want this to move, I can make it move. It could also be a uh, minute hand, an hour hand on a clock would need to move. Or if you're making a person or a robot or an animal, this is how you would attach their arms and legs so that they could move. Okay, one more way to attach things. Let's say you wanted something to stand up by itself. Take two pieces of cardboard. stand up, I can just cut a skinny piece out of one and cut a skinny piece out of the other and then join them that way. That way it stands up all by itself. That can be a very handy thing to do when you're working with cardboard. All right, so the last one, I almost forgot. This one's a little bit trickier. Teach you a word here. The word is phalange. Um, if you have a pipe going into the floor, uh, let's say in the sink, the sink pipe is going into the floor, you can't just put it there and hope that it stays. You want to make sure it's sealed. So there's a phalange on the bottom, and the way we're going to make a phalange, if we want this to stand up like a pipe, is I cut around the edge every inch or so. It's not rocket science, it doesn't have to be an exact inch each apart, it could be different sizes. Now it kind of looks like a flower. but. Let's say I want to attach that 
to the base. Maybe I'm going to make a really tall coconut tree. I can put it down like that. Then take my trusty duct tape paste stapler and tape down what looks like the roots. And if you wanted something to be able to go through the hole, through the hole and come out the other end, you would need to cut a whole circle in the cardboard before you put the tube on. And there it's attached. It's not going to go anywhere. I can't knock it over. Okay? So those are ways to attach things with cardboard. Now what I'd like to do is show you some of the things I made just to give you some ideas. The first thing I made was a gingerbread house. I even put some lights inside. Probably can't see them because it's very bright in this room. But all I used was straws, cut some things out of a coloring book, some cotton balls for snow, and made a gingerbread house. I could have actually used uh, frosting and candy on the outside of this. You could eat the frosting and candy part, but you wouldn't want to eat the cardboard. But it's a nice solid structure in case you have trouble making a real gingerbread house stand up. You can use cardboard. The second thing I made was a dollhouse room. Now, I've seen people stack one on top of the other on top of the other and uh, make lots of different rooms into a big house, even a giant mansion. You could make it for a tiny size something, or these are dollhouse dolls from our dollhouse here at the library. You could make it Barbie size or Ninja Turtle size. Uh, and all I did was put some wrapping paper for wallpaper. I cut out a picture of a TV so they can be watching SpongeBob. I even cut out, uh -huh. do you remember who did that Starry Night picture we talked about a month or so ago? Yeah, that's a Picasso. Picasso. <laughs> that's a Van Gogh on their wall. A Van Gogh. I'm the one who showed you the Van Gogh. I know it's Van Gogh. <laughs> okay, so a dollhouse is something you can make. What if you'd like to play a game? This is a very simple version of hockey. There's a couple different ways to make it. The way I made it is there is a hole in this piece of cardboard, and then I just slide it in. I cut it until it was the right size to slide in, just cutting a little off at a time. And you can take it apart and, and use it for something else, but if you want to play this little hockey game, you can take something like um, a bottle cap or a button. <laughs> I'm using brushes because that's what I have handy, but you could also use you could use a popsicle stick, whatever, and try to get the puck over into the other guy's zone. Now, a different way to do this, if you didn't want to put this in the middle, you could just cut little holes out on the side here and play and try to shoot into each other's goal. But super simple, I didn't even decorate this. Its purpose can be done without even decorating. I could put people sitting in the crowd. I could paint it like it's a hockey rink with the, the different patterns on the ice. But that was easy peasy. Speaking of easy peasy, I made a puppet theater. And this was super easy because all I had to do was cut away this part of the lid so that's gone. Put the other lid parts up and good old duct tape is making sure they stay up. This was a shallow box. It was only this high. 
with the lid coming down. I use the duct tape because I think it's a bright color and it's happy. And now I could put on a puppet show. Super, super easy. If you've ever been to one of our New Year's Eve parties, you might have seen our mini golf game. We play mini golf, and uh, all you need for a mini golf station is a box that you can make a hole in so that it goes something to go straight through. If one had a good aim, <laughs> it could go straight through. This one happens to be decorated like the Bangor Public Library, and it was the New Year's going into 2020, so we had pretend fireworks on top. But you could make a miniature golf course using cardboard boxes. We're down to my favorite thing that I made. I'm going to be playing with this later. It's big. I made a combination parking garage car wash. And for the sign that tells people how to go up the ramp to park, I used that technique of cutting a slice into it so that they know that that's where they go. And then I can play. I can even practice parallel parking if I want to. Whoa, not as easy as it looks. I can go through. <laughs> oh, I'm having too much fun, boys and girls. <laughs> so, if you've got boxes around the house, you see that the sky's the limit. Anything you can imagine, you can make. I'll put a list of things that came to my mind for making, and I'm sure you'll come up with things I never even thought of. So I hope you enjoy playing with cardboard boxes, and next week is our last steam of the season, and we're going to be making microwave mug cakes. Mmm, it's going to be tasty. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.